All right. Okay, and there should be clearance for the lander. Speaking of which, let's get on with the lander. That's all locked right now. No crew, of course. And it's got solar panels on the top of it. Uh, we'll have the shuttle evade it. Okay. And so we have 2,900 meters per second, so... Shouldn't be a problem to get down and get back up again. Let's do normal staging. That's good. Gear down. That's good. But... We have to make sure about comms again. Now, where is... The Kerbal? Kersted's there. At least we don't have to bring back Kersted's pod. Okay, well, Kersted is on the side that is in communication with Kerbin, so that's the good news. Bad news is inclination. So... Let's just fix that right here. Uh, Alright, let's think about that as our maneuver. Oh, electric charge. Uh, we really need to put it on hibernate and warp here. Okay, but we need to do this burn. That looks pretty good for an approach to Kerstead, initial approach. How long is our stage time? We only need like 500 meters per second of this, so not very long. We, I mean, we don't need a very long burn. Okay. Right here, that's three minutes. Well, it's not very long either. Not bad, though. This is a good approach. I mean, it's not like optimal optimal, but it's workable. And we have all the Delta V we need. I feel like Kersted's sort of on a slopey area though. I'm gonna try and park it on this side here. Now I'm being too picky, but I don't want to be on that slope, so Kersted's gonna have to get over here. Trying to get as close to Kerstead as possible. We're doing some minor Neil Armstrong stuff here. Yeah, but best that we did not try and go into there. I mean, no wonder his Kerstead got stranded. Okay, so here's our virus-like lander, admittedly. Kerstead is not even in the pod anymore. <laughs> okay, get into the shuttle lander. Okay, we might not need the ladder. Let's see. Kerstead, can you do this without knocking over the... Actually, you know what? I don't trust you. I don't trust you to do that without knocking over the pod. Use the ladder instead. Kerstead is a scientist. Okay, uh, come on, get to the... Come on, you can board. Uh... Board, all right, jeez. Put the ladder there and still you can't get in properly. We need to proceed and the shuttle is going westward. And so we should go westward, though we will not be in the same inclination as the shuttle initially. So, but let's get on with it. To the west. And go. We'll just go flat west since we can't really get into the same inclination yet. Spark engine power. What's that there? Moon station. Yeah, this is a bit extreme, but, well, maybe I do want to bring some of the fuel. It's probably not worth that much to bring the fuel back. Let's just 
expedite matters like this and get that encounter there, I think. Okay, here we go. The shuttle approaches. Okay, coming too quickly. Slow down, slow down. Every part of this mission basically has too much mod propellant. <laughs> uh... Ah, we got magnetism and docking. Even before I got done saying we got magnetism. Okay, so... Well, we can put the mod propellant into the cockpit. That's probably for the best. And the rest of the propellants... Well, they'll probably crossfeed in anyway. That leaves us with 400 meters per second now. And a bunch of mob propellant. So, can we go back home? That is the question. Going around this way, so we exit on this side. We can error break in Kerbin's atmosphere. But I would really like to land at the KSC if possible. So, we all have to finagle things. Let's keep it fairly high in the atmosphere. We can take our time arrow breaking. Let's try 42. 42 is the answer. Okay, let's go with that. It's totally not telling me the right burn time, isn't it? Is it? Uh, two seconds, right. These are terriers. What are you thinking? Maybe we're not controlling from the right thing. Let's see. Nope, we are controlling from the cockpit. Well, there's our stuff. We've lost a lot of Delta V somehow. Oh, was it contributing Delta V from that pod? I don't know. Hmm, we seem a bit imbalanced here. It might be the fuel cells took that much? I don't think so. And 42 kilometers. We'll see how well that works. I should probably transfer uh, Luton Kerman into the cockpit and also Kirstead. I don't know if it's safer in the cockpit, but just in principle. All right, on to Kerman. Well, we're mostly equatorial, I mean, so that's a good thing. And now we get to check out the untested aerodynamics of this vehicle. They're both scientists. And we need to retract that antenna, I suppose. Now our orbit is being pulled down. Oh, it's overheating already. Well, at least a little bit. I wonder why it was overheating so early in the atmosphere and then cooled off. Seems strange. Shouldn't that be stuff that's inside the cargo bay? We're going up. Taking a look at control authority. We're using a lot of pitch authority. I hesitate to try and touch the controls, but we don't really need to be that far nose up. Oh, but it's overheating. Uh, maybe right there will be okay. Is it the nose cone? I've had problems with the nose cones overheating sometimes. Well, pretty good initial error breaking. Alright, so we're left with uh, 396 by 33 orbit which is still pretty high on this end. KSC's right there. I mean, if we want to. But that would probably be a little bit too decisive. Then again, 
our angle of entry this time around was not mild. So that costs basically more than we have. That, so inclination change might be a problem. We probably should wait until the KSC comes over on this side. Now let's, let's lift our periapsis up first. And we will do that with RCS. All right, a little bit of terrier action here. So the question is whether I want to get into a nice tight standard orbit, you know, 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers, or whether I want to just keep this and try and bring it down steeply. I think if we've got the fuel to get into a standard orbit, that might be better. Uh, we risk mountains and stuff like that, too. All right, that's 90 kilometers on one side. Let's say we try to bring it down. How much does it cost? It costs too much to bring our or orbit down. Hmm. Maybe we should try and land. Well, we'll wait until it's on that side. Uh, uh, I don't know if we can. Either way, it's troublesome. Here, it's inclination is a problem. There, it's probably too high up. We could do a light error breaking thing to try and bring the apoapsis down just a tiny bit, but that's tough to judge. Well, I'm gonna try a light error breaking pass, so RCS, I'm gonna RCS back into the atmosphere. Just 65 kilometers, that's it. That's what we're gonna try. We'll see how far that brings us down. May, may it be too far? It may be. Well, we probably have one more orbit before we would like to hit the KSC. Okay, we're in space again. We knocked off only about 20 to 30 kilometers from our altitude, our apoapsis. And yeah, this time around we would like to hit the KSC. No. Uh, 58 kilometers, let's try that. If we splash down, we splash down, you know, what can we do? We just want to be low enough so that I can then use the rest of the Delta V to pull it down to the KSC. Well, this is better. And I think this is workable. KSC's there, our orbit is north of it, but not by too much. Okay, yeah, that was a better air braking pass. We're going to end up in an orbit with an apoapsis slightly less than 100 kilometers, it looks like. Try and get to, well, the desert launch field, uh, launch, uh, sorry, the desert airfield. I was mixing up launch site and airfield. It's not in the worst place. I haven't visited it. Like, at all. Hmm. It'd be safer because it's desert, right? Well, there's certain sort of mountains there. I don't know. I think we should try for the KSC anyway. So I'm going to try for a path like that with a uh, fairly low periapsis. Uh, we're going to end up 89 kilometers there. Probably hitting the atmosphere around here. That's probably too early. Probably. But our periapsis is all the way around. And... Burn. That burn time, I don't know why it's so wrong, but... It is. Oh, our Delta V is reading something completely different now, too. Hmm, what has changed? Well... We've brought our periapsis down and we're changing our inclination, so we're getting what we wanted to do done anyway. Whatever other things that's trying to pull on me. Okay, so, yep. This will have to do. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, we're definitely passing the desert launch site. Uh, 
Uh, maybe we should retro a little bit more. I feel like we're gonna pass the KSC as well at this rate. Well, fairly low periapsis, we'll see. I think I should have air brakes out, we'll see how long they last. Alright, we have encountered the atmosphere again. We probably should be trying to turn south a bit, if we can. At all. Can we do cross range with this? So far it seems okay. The pitch is a little bit much. Got some side slip. Yeah, well, we're having trouble turning it south. But we're not that far off. Well, oh, I tried to control it and it messed up. Oh no. Get back up there. Uh-oh. I should have just let it be. Oh, no, no, don't slide off there. Well, how much can I turn it without it breaking apart or anything? At least it's not fair mirror space trying to break me apart at every opportunity. They're not turning very well though. Come on. Come on, little shuttle. It wants to go the other way. I'm trying here. I'm trying. Maybe the island runway? I don't know. Got a lot of height to work with. We're turning, sort of. I mean, the KSC's in sight, and that's always a good thing. If you, If you've got the... Landing site visible. It's a good sign that you can get to it. Well, it's a better sign than not having it visible. Okay, well, since we've turned around, I don't want the brakes out anymore. We're sort of falling brick ish right now. Think it's doable. Well, it flies pretty well, considering this is the first time I've flown it. But, you know, I've flown something similar to it, so it's not, entire, not entirely a surprise. Let's use up the fuel. Uh, pitch is barely, barely being used much at all, so it's pretty well balanced. It looks like it worked out pretty well. If we needed to balance it further, we could shift fuel from uh, the shift the mod propellant from the nose to the tail, or vice versa. I did put the drogue chute on the tail there. Did not put split rudders, obviously, because that's excessive. It's just extra mass. I got to put the landing gear before I. What? Cannot deploy while stowed. What do you mean? Uh oh. What? Oh shoot, um... Do I mean cannot deploy while stowed? Oh god. Uh, guys, we've got a problem. <laughs> cannot deploy while stowed? I can't go to a tracking station and come back now. How do I convince that it's not stowed? Okay. Uh, this deploy shielded thing. Alright. Silly goose. That's a very tiny wheelbase. I should have put them a little further out. Let's go with uh, locked view. I wonder what its stall speed is. <laughs> okay, and brakes. Parachute. Uh, 
It's taking some effort to slow down. Okay, but we made it. We can taxi off even. Or not. No, actually we can't. We don't have enough turning authority. Okay, just break, 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 break. We'll get towed off. It's fine. They do that. All right. So, recover vessel. And shockingly, the first flight of that shuttle went pretty well. <laughs> uh, nobody more surprised than I am, though. Again, you know, I've done shuttles in stock before, so it's not completely unprecedented. Not exactly like this one, but within the same ballpark, so not hugely surprising. Luton and Luton scrap were recovered, and Kirstead was recovered. So... With that, and this was probably two episodes, with these episodes, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.